Welcome back to the final episode of CCTV at Chemcom the Americas 2016. With today, the Q&A on Asia, an interview on loss of experience and the final coverage of our local reporter Karen. But first, some tips and tricks from our Q&A on Asia. In each of your presentations, you mentioned that if a chemical were being manufactured for export only, under some circumstances, they may not require registration. And I wonder if each of you can discuss the boundaries for that circumstance where they might not require registration. And I think in some cases also intermediates manufacture may not require registration. In case of Japan, the export only and intermediate is excluded for the new chemical notification. But uh, it's subject to the confirmation. Confirmation means you have to uh, submit some certain uh, type of document uh, to the government, and then uh, government will provide some confirmation. Um, uh, under the confirmation, you can export or uh, like that. Now, from what I've been reading. Um we, uh, my, my company is a mixture uh, pr provider. Um, my understanding is that mixtures themselves will also be named on the Thailand chemical inventory. Is that correct? Mm, it divided into two parts. That is uh, for the inventory, that is, will be a substance, not the name of mixture. All sub all chemical, that is a single substance that will be in the inventory. But if your product is mixture, we have the uh, notification that is we call War or God 20. That is you can input all the composition in that notification and we will review all the data that is uh, if it's the complete and meet our requirement, we will put it in the control, in the existing list or in the inventory. Time for our final report of our local reporter. Karen, what is the final Toronto treasure you'd like to share with us? Hi, Chaird. I'm here at the Toronto Zoo, home of about 6,000 animals that are organized into six zoo geographic regions. Since you've chosen Canada as the home country for ChemCon Americas 2016, I'd like to take you to the Canadian domain. A famous symbol of Canada is the grizzly bear, typically seen in the wilderness of western Canada and in some parts of northern Canada. The grizzly bear is a subspecies of the brown bear. The color of its fur can be anywhere from cream to dark brown or nearly black. However, the tips of their fur are typically white or silver, giving them a grizzled look, hence the name grizzly. When fully grown, it grows to about two meters in height. I think that's about seven feet, which should be about your height, shouldn't it be, Cheered? The Western grizzly is listed as a species of special concern in Canada because of their low reproductive rates and high mortality in areas of human activity. Grizzly bears are not as rare as the pizzly or growler. These are hybrid offspring of the mating of grizzly bears and polar bears. Speaking of polar bears, let's go see the ones that are here at the Toronto Zoo. A special member here in the zoo's polar bear population is Juno, who will celebrate her first birthday on November 11th, only a few short weeks away. Born on Remembrance Day last year, Juno was named in honour and remembrance of the Canadian Army's involvement in the Battle of Juno Beach, and she has since been adopted by the Canadian Army as the first polar bear to bear an official rank in the Canadian military. But all news is not happy news for polar bears in Canada reduction of the ice cover in the Arctic has been a serious concern globally for many years. The Toronto Zoo offers a living centre for education and science and is committed to inspiring passion to protect wildlife and habitats. And who does not want to stop the melting of ice when your heart is melted by the actions of this curious cub? Cheered. There's another type of special bear cub that I'd like to introduce you to before we leave the zoo. Okay, we'll get back to you. A lot of information was shared about today's and tomorrow's legal frameworks in Asia, and many business experiences were shared by our industry experts. They are all following the trends on global product regulatory and supply chain best practices and challenges. One challenging trend I will discuss in today's interview, the loss of experience. Some of the decision makers might think it's true to reduce the number of in-house experts. They even have a name for that, the outsourcing model. Do you think that actually works, that model? It can work, 
but like managing any sort of project, whether we're managing regulatory, advocacy, building a plant with engineering, you still need in-house experts who are managing the experts. I would agree, it's a matter of efficiency. You will get the job done, but without that in-house expertise, the history, the knowledge of the technology, it will be a much longer project each and every time. But did Faro invest in successorship? Faro retained me for a while to answer questions, and I retain a, a good relationship in, in case uh, you need a lot of extra work done. I'm, I'm available for that. Uh, and I kind of trained the next guy. So if chemical industry would be able to increase the X factor and attract more people, how would you be able to educate them or what would you be your advice? If they can reinforce within the organization, they already recognize there's a problem. So that's, that's there. Okay. Now the solution is you have to spend some money. You have to crack some eggs to make an omelet. It's not going to just happen. Yeah. Uh, and, and what it is is investing time in these folks, giving them the opportunity to learn and grow and see things. And that way they will stay and you will get the, the institutional knowledge you're looking for. Please watch the complete interview on our website and YouTube channel. And now it's time for the statement of the day. Today's statement is about emergency prevention and response. Definitely a topic that requires a lot of experience. With us in our studio, Richard Davey from the UK's National Chemical Emergency Centre. Richard, Murphy's Law teaches us anything that can go wrong, will go wrong. How well are industries prepared for emergencies? That's a very good question, Ted. Um, I think you look at Monday's incident, you can have the world's largest chemical manufacturer who's, who's well prepared for incidents and um, they happen. You're dealing with chemicals, so um, you need to make sure you've got the right infrastructure in place in order to protect your people, property, environment and, um, and reputation. So making sure that you've got the right emergency response numbers, local numbers, local language support so that you can pro provide quick effective advice um, to the caller is critical. And your statement is? Is your company well prepared for an emergency? Please share with us your answer. Richard, thank you very much. You're welcome. Time to say farewell to our local reporter. Karen, what other backups did you want to show us? Last week, the twins, Zhao Pan Pan, meaning Canadian hope, and Zhao Ue Ue, meaning Canadian joy, celebrated their first birthday, and it was quite a celebration. Staff from the Toronto Zoo and China's Shenzhou research base of giant panda breeding worked together to care for the mother, Er Shun, and her fragile cubs during the early weeks and months after her birth. Watching the twins play and enjoy their bamboo is itself a reason to visit this fantastic zoo. In the wild, giant panda spends 10 to 16 hours a day foraging and eating. The rest of its time is spent mostly sleeping and resting. Gosh, cheered, this sounds just like my retirement. At one time, giant pandas were much more widespread in China. Now they live only in a few mountain ranges in western China. Although these particular young cubs have not been to China, you will all surely have the opportunity to see their relatives in China when you travel there for ChemCon Asia in June 2017. Well cheered, that's it. My final report for ChemCon Americas 2016. I hope you've enjoyed the reports I've offered this week. By the way, you and your team are doing an awesome job at organizing these ChemCon conferences around the world. As a speaker for more than 10 years, I can tell you that these are unparalleled networking opportunities and I've really enjoyed all the people that I've met over the years. I am Karen Levins for CCTV. Thank you very much, Karen. We will all miss you. Enjoy your well-deserved retirement. And now it's time for the forecast of the day. Today's forecast focuses on updates of relevant regulatory frameworks for industry in the China region. Among others, attention for the new chemical substance notification scheme, as well as a forecast on the changes of the Taiwanese Toxic Chemical Substance Control Act, including the recently announced establishment of the Bureau of Toxics and Chemical Substances. Much more on China next year at ChemCon Asia 2017. Thank you for watching, it was our privilege sharing all the news with you this week. We hope you liked it and we look forward to seeing you in Beijing.